Ben would like to know what the future development may be for Parkinson's sufferers. Um, in Parkinson's, the problem is that you do not manufacture enough dopamine in a part of the brain called the substantia nigra. The first treatment was easy. There was no treatment. The second treatment was that we recognised the biochemical imbalance, gave people the drug in an oral form, and some of it went into the brain, crossing the blood-brain barrier. They got better for a while. They actually got a lot better. Honeymoon period, and then everything caught up and they got worse and worse, and then the unfortunate downward decline. And, and it's variable in some people. Some people have Parkinson's where they decline very rapidly, and other people have it very mildly. It's a spectrum. Then we went for pacemakers in the brain. That's where we are now. The fourth stage, which will really give us the, the proper answer, will be via genetics. We will be able to genetically modify the brain back to the stage where you were are again able to do what when you were 18 to 25. You'll be able, in the substantia nigra, to manufacture dopamine. It did it once. It switched off, we don't know why, we'll be able to switch it back on again. The, this is um, one of the stages of genetic engineering. Genetic engineering was held back for five years while President Bush was in power in the United States. It is now picking up steam. And in 15 to 25 years, we'll find these treatments coming online. That's where we are at the moment. At the moment, the pacemaker is probably the best thing. But that is a, 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 a foreseeable future? Oh, yeah. We're already treating certain diseases by modifying the DNA. Um, for example, as a medical doctor, I've come across two young men who lost their right arms by driving in the car with their arm out the side of the window. Another car comes along, scrapes it off, and, and we'll be able to grow those arms again because the DNA here in the arm has got all of the instructions ready to grow another arm. We don't know how to switch it on, but we will. This one's from Morris or Maurice. He's in his early he's in his early nineties, and he wants to early nineties. Mm. Wow, I'd like to have him as a grandparent or a parent. That's good DNA, yeah. Uh, by the way, the rule is anybody can get on in general. Anybody can get into their eighties by exercise and good diet. If you want to get into your hundreds, you got to have exercise, good diet, and choose the right parents and grandparents. Anyway, so Morris Maurice he, he is... Morris Maurice wants to know what he can do to improve his sense of balance. What he, uh, balance is tricky. There are three or four elements to balance. One element is what you see with your eyes. You look around you and you see that you're leaning this way or that way. That's one element. The second element are the little stones and the balance centres inside the ear. And they change shape. Imagine you've got a hollow sphere and you've got little hairs poking in all directions to the centre, like a three-dimensional bicycle wheel. And in the middle is a little stone, a little round stone. So if it's pressing on these hairs or these hairs or that hair, you're leaning left or right or vertically. Imagine if the stone, because it's dynamic or crystal, changes shape. And instead of being a perfect circle, now looks like a peanut shell. Well, it's pressing on these hairs and these hairs, so you're both leaning this way and that way at the same time. And this will happen to some of the guys in the audience. It might even happen to me. One day you wake up, and it's been happening for a while, and you've been able to compensate for it, and one morning you get up and you stand up and then you immediately fall down because your balance tells you you're falling left and right at the same time. You then start vomiting. You're stuck with that for the next couple of years. <laughs> so you can't do much about that at the moment with our current technology. And the other thing is proprioception which is a fancy medical word meaning knowing where your joints are. So if I come to you and I grab your right arm, I put you in a room, a long skinny room, and at the end of the room is a light. The whole room is darkened and at the end is a light. And I get the arm, I grab your arm, and I say point at that light. So you're pointing at that light. And then I come up to you and I move your arm in a clockwise direction you'll see the light going in an anti-clockwise direction. Weird, huh? Huh? Which then takes us back to the question. Proprioception. What you can do is Tai Chi and yoga, and that will, by feedback, improve your sense of proprioception, of where your joints are at any time, and that will help improve your sense of balance. Glasses also help. If you've got cataracts, get them fixed. Can't do much about the crystals in the ear in uh, this year, maybe in 10, 15 years. Right now, nothing. So there's hope maybe when oh, he, yeah. if, he, if he eats well and he... And, he and does the hundreds. yoga and the Tai Chi, do both. Can't hurt.
Dennis hopes that this is not too gross. Mm -hmm. Nothing's gross. Good. He says, I have hay fever all year round. Yes. The clear fluid that can drain from my nasal passages and can last for hours gets so bad that sometimes it burns my nose and upper lip and turns it red and sore, then scabs up. I'd like to know what is in the fluid that seems so acidic and how can my body produce so much of it for so long? Well, amazingly, I actually discuss this fluid in great detail in this fine book. In the chapter relating to onions and why onions make you tear. And it turns out that there are three different glands in the eye up here that, in the eye socket, that make three different liquids. One liquid is the bulk of the liquid. One liquid is designed to stick to the front of the cornea. And another liquid is sort of fatty and is designed to be the interface with the outside world. And because it's fatty, it won't dry off so quickly. And it's the ratio of these three liquids that might have changed. I would first go to his GP and then maybe go to an ophthalmologist. It might be an ophthalmologist, it might be a dermatologist, it might be, somebody, it might, might be a bit of each. That's a tricky one. It shouldn't be burning. It could be an allergist as well, so it could be an immunologist. Luckily, in Australia, we have a good system where you can get this sort of done, uh, stuff done at a reasonable price.